Hello one and all. Today we are continuing our studies at KVC and we're looking at Exodus chapter 3, uh, looking at Moses and it's the, uh, the chapter covering the burning bush, entitled On a First Name Basis with God. First Name Basis. So the writer of our study book, um, Darren Spoo, that's his name, uh, says that the life of Moses can be divided into three segments, 40 years each. His first 40 years were spent in Egypt, being brought up by Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as a baby after finding him in the, the bulrushes. Remember the famous story of where his Israelite mother hid him to, to escape the attack of the Egyptians, which meant that, uh, well, he enjoyed a, a relatively privileged upbringing, um, being brought up in the royal household in Egypt. And then the second era of Moses' life can be uh, described as in the wilderness. He ran away, didn't he? Uh, he? He killed an Egyptian soldier who was beating an Israelite slave. And when it was clear he'd been found out, he fled for his life, fearing attack and uh, retribution for what he'd done. So what followed was 40 years in the desert. He got married, became a shepherd and worked for his father-in-law, Jethro. And we call that a time of preparation, if you like. Uh, for what was to come next. And then the final 40 years uh, began with the exodus from Egypt, uh, where Moses led the people from slavery under the Egyptians. And uh, this last era really begins in Exodus chapter 3, our chapter. Uh, but he, remember, he was 80 years old in Exodus chapter 3. And that's where he, he starts perhaps his most significant period of his life. And he meets God at the burning bush, um, and that's where we pick up the story. So let's read it. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the, burn, the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw he had turned aside, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. I love that section. It's so simple, so profound. God appears in that burning bush, draws Moses in and calls him by name. And he responds, here I am. And then God introduces himself so gently, but carefully. Within, this is holy ground. He, Moses mustn't get too close. You know, he's, God has made the whole place holy by his very presence. And, and he has to remove his shoes. The radiance of the Holy One of Israel will consume him if he's not careful. So therefore, Moses is humble and reverent and careful before God and yet strangely drawn in, and, and he engages him in conversation. By the way, at the start of each day, how about come before God and say, here I am, here I am. I've been trying to start every day with that simple thought, waiting before God, experiencing his presence. And the writer of our devotional, uh, Darren Spoo, says that Moses discovered two main things at the burning bush. The first was God's name. God reveals himself to Moses and he learns that his name is I am who I am. And the Hebrew term could also be translated I will be who I will be. God is as he is, not as we would have him to be. Some people say that we have created God or the idea of God in our own image, not the other way around. But this scripture shows that God is much deeper than our efforts to define him. His identity is eternal and not even a single name is big enough to capture his very essence, his full character. In fact, in the New Testament, in the book of John, Jesus himself used the I am name of God to describe himself or to refer to himself. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate, I am the good shepherd, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the way, the truth and the life, and I am the vine. 
And these titles reveal not only Jesus' qualities, but what he's like and his divinity, that he is equal with God. But as well as learning God's name, he also learns that he can just talk to God face to face as you would a friend. Not only in chapter three, but many times perhaps Moses would come before God and say, here I am. And so can we. And at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, 10 to 12, it records this. Since then, there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. You know, Moses seemed to have the same kind of rapport with God that you might have with a friend. Yes, he understood God as almighty, as creator, as holy, but he also understood him as shepherd, comforter, and someone he could just talk to. And we too have this privilege of knowing almighty creator God through faith in Jesus Christ. And that relationship brings a sense of of purpose and destiny, just as Moses found. We can say with all confidence that we share an intimate relationship and friendship with the God of the entire universe. Rob's message on Sunday, that's the 23rd of April, 2023, um, he talked about experiencing God's presence and he expanded on what that really means through a study on Elisha. I'd encourage you to listen to it. It's a, it's a good complementary study to go with this. The second thing Moses discovered at the burning bush was his own destiny. And that was to lead the deliverance of the Israelites, the Hebrews, from, their slave, from slavery and from under that Egyptian oppression into the promised land, or in that direction at least. And it was an epic journey. We read about it, the, the, the famous plagues, the Passover, the splitting of the Red Sea to allow them to cross on dry land. And later on, the giving of the Ten Commandments and so on. An epic journey. And the exodus from Egypt is so significant. It's a pivotal moment in their history and it's celebrated every year with the Passover. And, and the fact that God rescued his people from slavery and revealed his mighty power is a reoccurring theme throughout scripture. Because of the Exodus, the Israelites could always see themselves as redeemed of God, rescued from slavery and blessed with God's favour. And that redemption was to find its ultimate fulfilment in Jesus himself, who like Moses, set his people free, established a covenant, a new covenant, and that covenant results in salvation for all those who trust in Jesus Christ. So as we reflect on this chapter, Theron Spoo encourages us to reflect on those three eras of Moses' life and understand perhaps our own lives in a similar sort of context. Moses spent 40 years in Egypt. You could describe that as a, a period of ease and of blessing. And then 40 years in exile, a period of difficulty, 40 years leading the Exodus, a time of fulfilling his life's mission and his purpose, his destiny. And the question arises, what season are we in right now? I've been learning recently how important it is to have those here I am moments before God every morning to rest in his presence to hear his voice, to cultivate that relationship with him, to experience his almost tangible presence and to take his presence wherever I go through the day, whoever I meet. And Darren leaves us with this thought, whatever your season, realise that God is both present and at work in your life. Cultivate that relationship with him so that you might fulfil your destiny. Well, thank you for listening. God bless and bye for now.